so far we've dealt entirely with numerical data and for the most part that's been data that's uh, that fits in floating point variables uh, but I do want to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, categorical data because this is also something that comes up in lots of uh, different situations so categorical data and another term for this is enumerated data type so so the possible values for an enumerated type are uh, either uh, strings or symbols. This is a, a discrete set of values, uh, and it's also a finite set. And there is no, uh, from, from one possible value to the next, uh, there, there's, we certainly acknowledge that there's a difference, but that difference is going to be identical to the difference between any other two values that we uh, encode within this uh, enumerated type. Uh, most of our, as I said, most of our machine learning algorithms only work in numerical data, so we need some way of taking these categorical variables and bringing them over to a numeric representation. Of course, over the course of the semester, we will also touch on some algorithms that don't need to, to drop the data into a numerical representation. So this process is often done in a series of stages. Uh, the first stage, uh, and, and this is happening during the fit process, is to identify the set of possible categorical values. These values are then transformed into some uh, integer index. The, the order uh, of assignment between integer and symbolic value is arbitrary. Uh, and then the final step is to transform the integer index into something that's called a one-hot encoding. So if I have n different values that are possible with a particular categorical variable, then we have an array of bits, and, and in particular it's n bits, and uh, of these bits, all the values of the bits are zero, except for one that corresponds to the category that we're uh, interested in. Or that, that we're trying to encode. We're going to use uh, in this example a class from scikit-learn called One Hot Encoder. And do note that this is different than the example that is given in the book. The book actually, uh, the the class that's being used is deprecated at this point in time. So let's do a live example. Okay, I've already done the import here, so we're pulling from scikit-learn dot preprocessing. So this is a sub package of the sklearn uh, package. And we're pulling a particular class called one hot encoder out of that. So when we execute this line of code, then uh, Python makes this this class available to us. So first, let's, let's create some synthetic data. And I'm just going to put a bunch of strings in into that. Well, that was supposed to be bar. We'll do bar a couple of different times. Who as bar bar and bar. Okay, so uh, so this is an array of uh, strings. Uh, one question that you should be able to answer is how many different strings do we have here? And the answer is four different. We have foo bar baz and foo bar. So let's uh, define that. And for this one hot encoder, it is already expecting a 2D NumPy array, uh, whereas this is a Python list. So we need to create that array. So np.array is the constructor for that. And we're, we'll hand it our list. This will produce a 1D NumPy array. So we're going to reshape that uh, such that we have uh, an arbitrary number of rows, however many rows we need, and exactly one column. So now if we ask what data array two looks like, it shouldn't look all that different than what we have, uh, except now we have uh, things that are uh, arranged in, in columns. 
And in particular, we can ask what the shape of this object is. And it is 10 rows and one column. Okay, let's go ahead and build our encoder. The constructor takes no arguments. Okay, so, sorry, not encoder three, we're just going to do encoder. So, so we're going to do a fit transform and the data we have to handle, hand it is our data array two. Now, if we look at what the value of mat is, uh, this actually is returning not a, just a, num, a standard NumPy matrix that we've been looking at up to this point. It actually returns a sparse matrix that has 10 rows, so, so that those 10 correspond to one another. But now we have four columns. And the reason we have four columns is that we have four different possible values uh, within this, uh, within this uh, enumerated type. So let's actually look at the, the values. Um, one possibility is to use the two dense function. So mat dot two dense. So that converts us from a sparse matrix to a dense matrix and I'll execute that. And, and now we have something that looks a lot more familiar. We have one row again uh, for each of our possible values. Uh, but you'll notice that for each row, we have all zeros except for one one. Let's look at the original data array here. So the, the first element here corresponds to the first row. So foo is encoded by having a one in, in this column here. Bar is encoded by having a one in the, the zeroth column. So, so these two rows are the same. They correspond to bar and bar. Foo, uh, this is identical to the very, the, the very top row. Uh, and baz corresponds to this row here where we have a one in, in this column here. And then, so foo bar must be uh, this last column. So this is our, our very quick example of using, uh, of doing one hot encoding. Uh, one of the critical things to look at here, in, now that we have a matrix in front of us, uh, is that for values that are the same, if you imagine computing the difference between that row vector and this row vector, the difference is zero. But if I take any other uh, pair where the enumerated types are different. So let's take this first one here and this row here. If you actually computed the difference between these two, uh, if, if you're computing an L1 difference, then, then the difference is two. If you're computing an L2 difference uh, between the two vectors, then the, the total distance is uh, square root of two. Uh, no matter which pair we take we're, we're, uh, from these rows, we're going to end up with either a difference of zero, which means that the enumerated values are the same, or we're going to end up with identical uh, differences, which means that the enumerated values are different. And, and this, in some sense, captures our intuition that foo and bar, the difference between foo and bar, really should be the same as the difference between foo and bas. Okay, so that, that's our quick example of uh, doing one hot encoding in enumerated types. And our next step is to augment our existing data frame with, with data that we compute here.